So it's been about a year that I've owned the Fujifilm X-E4, and it's a camera that I use quite a bit over that span of time. And to be honest, there really isn't much about this camera that's revolutionary or drastically different than other Fujifilm cameras. It's a pretty simple camera, but sometimes that's all I need for the kind of photography that I do. And just to be clear, this is an experience video, not an in-depth review on this camera. But you know, if you don't even own an X-E4, there's a lot of things I'm going to talk about that you might be able to carry over to your own camera. This is my one-year experience with the X-E4 and how I use it for street photography. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So before we get into all the settings of this camera and how I have it all set up, uh, it makes sense to talk about the kit as a whole because really this camera doesn't work without many of these other essential things. Most importantly, the two lenses that I use with the X-E4, the XF 35mm f2 and the 50mm f2. These are some of the most compact lenses that you can own for a Fujifilm system in my opinion, and they work perfectly well with the compact body of this X-E4. You know, these are definitely not the fastest Fujifilm lenses by any means, but you know, for street photography, personally, I'll take the smaller form factor over the wider aperture any day of the week. These are the full frame equivalents for all of these lenses. The 35 millimeter, AKA the 53 millimeter is my most used lens with this X-E4. It covers a focal length that I've really grown to enjoy shooting street photography with. You know, I talked about this in a previous video of mine on the channel, but I feel like I see a lot of the world around me in a 50 millimeter lens. I also find myself a lot more creative in experimenting more when I use longer focal lengths like this. The 76 millimeter is the latest addition to the kit and it really only serves one purpose for me and that's for when the 53 millimeter is feeling a bit too wide for the kind of composition I'm trying to take. I always find shooting street photography is a bit more challenging with this focal length um, and it really pushes me to look a lot closer at my environment, experiment a bit more, and just move a lot slower. Now most of the time I carry my 35mm but uh, it's hard to not bring my 50mm along with me as well. It's just such a compact lens and it's really easy to fit in any camera bag. I got a lot of questions about my camera bag in one of my last videos. This is the Ona Rockaway Sling Bag. Now you might have a different experience with the X-E4, but personally I find it has little or really no ergonomics whatsoever. But I'm used to using cameras that have no front grip, so it's something I can live without. However, I find that the hot shoe thumb grip really helps me hold this camera, so I usually always have that attached. I should also mention the compensation dial. It's very easy to turn and it just makes it easy to accidentally change while you're out shooting. I've had this happen to me many times using this camera, so I wish it was something that you could just lock. There are a few key custom buttons that I use on this camera. I programmed this custom button here on the camera to my photometry settings. If I'm looking to expose just for the highlights and get really bold shadows, I'll shoot in spot metering mode. But if I'm looking to get an overall exposure of the scene and get a more balanced exposure, I'll shoot in multi-metering mode. Having photometry set to this button here makes it really easy for me to go between both of these modes. I also use the Q button on my X-E4 to lock exposure. This might sound surprising to some people, but there really isn't anything else I personally need to be stored in the quick menu. I'd much rather have another custom button as a quick way to lock my exposure, and I'll talk about this a bit more in a bit. I also make sure to disable the focus lever here because I found it to be really easy to accidentally hit while you're out taking photos. And that's about it when it comes to function buttons on this camera. I could probably use one more custom button just so I could get the quick menu back, but honestly, it's enough for my needs. Fujifilm really tried to simplify the X-E4 as much as possible, and you know, I know a lot of people might look at it as dumbing it down a bit, but I really think it was an effort to make this a pure photography camera. 
My autofocus setup with the X-E4 primarily uses back button focusing, paired with the autofocus and manual focus setting enabled. A lot of people have complained that the X-E4 got rid of the autofocus switch on the side, but I find when you set up back button focusing in this way, you're basically always shooting in manual focus and autofocus at the same time. So, you know, there's really no reason to need a autofocus switch. Let me explain that further if that's a little confusing. Most people have their cameras set to where you half press the shutter. The camera will start to focus. When you set up back button focusing, you essentially disable the autofocus ability of half pressing the shutter and you reprogram your autofocus to the back button of your camera. In this instance, the AEAFL button on the XE4. So now when I half press the shutter, nothing's going to happen. Um, the only way I can focus is with the back button. And you know, when I fully press on the shutter, it won't focus, it will just take the photo. So now I can shoot and focus manually, but also have autofocus a click away. It's basically a preventative measure from having you know, the camera do something when I don't want it to. You know, it can be frustrating when you already have focus set and you're just waiting for you know, the perfect subject to walk into frame. And when you take the picture, it refocuses. When you're dealing with a genre of photography that relies so much on you know, getting that perfect moment you know, the time it takes for your camera to refocus on the subject, then take the photo, that could end up ruining your shot. So in short, these are the main settings I have applied for focusing this way. So before we get into exposure settings, I wanna take the time to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for the last five years, and it's my preferred way to show all of my recent favorite work, as well as run my own digital store. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for anyone looking to build their own photography portfolio. With easy-to-use photography templates, e-commerce controls, and social media integration, my Squarespace site has become a one-stop shop for all things related to me and my photography. The photography templates on Squarespace make it really easy for anyone, regardless of their experience, to make a really professional-looking online portfolio. Something I've really taken advantage of on my Squarespace site is the ability to make your own links page. It's just a super Super easy way to have all of my related links under one main link that way I can share that one link on all of my different social media platforms so you know if you've been running with just an Instagram page to show your work all of this time consider trying out Squarespace and hitting the link in the description for a 14 day free trial and when you're ready to launch your site you can head over to squarespace.com slash for 10% off your first purchase So on the XE4, I like to shoot in aperture priority or program shift. The new processor and sensor on this camera works just fast enough and good enough for me that I'm comfortable shooting in auto on this camera. I find that it frees up a lot more time for me to focus more on the moment rather than fiddling with my camera and making sure you know the settings are right. So this is where having the Q button set to lock exposure comes into play. So a lot of people have lock exposure to the half press of the shutter button. I've turned that off on this camera and I've reprogrammed that to the Q button. What this lets me do is basically aim for where I want to expose um, and then hitting the Q button to lock that exposure and then having complete freedom of the camera. I don't have to keep my finger on the shutter to make sure my you know, exposure is locked in. If I need to re-expose for the scene, I'll just hit the Q button again. It will unlock that exposure, re-expose uh, for the scene. And then once I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking at the back LCD to make sure the exposure looks good to me. Once it does, I'll hit the Q button again and then lock it. I find this works really well with the way I use this camera, which is typically a slower approach to street photography. When it comes to durability of this camera, uh, it's safe to say that it will definitely scrape up a bit. Um, mine has a few dings on the side and on the front here. Granted, I have the silver version, so these kind of marks are a lot more visible. But something I find a little annoying about the design of this camera that actually would prevent a lot of this damage is the strap loops. I really wish this was the regular strap loop that you see on most cameras. That way I'd be able to use the straps I already have that have built-in protective bumpers. Something I've done to mitigate some of the scraping on the side here is using a triangle loop, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of damage already done. 
Lastly, I want to touch on weather sealing. This camera has no weather sealing. Now, to be honest, this wasn't a deal breaker for me because I don't really shoot in pouring rain all that often, but there are times where I shoot in a little bit of a drizzle and this camera's fine in that kind of weather. The two lenses that I own are also weather sealed lenses, so that does provide a little bit of protection. So I get a lot of questions from people on if I choose the X-E4 over the X-100V. And you know, since I own the two, it's not an easy question for me to answer. I'd probably just say, why not both? But I get where the question comes from. I've been shooting with various focal lengths lately, and I've really enjoyed that process. So I think that's really what it comes down to. Are you okay with a fixed 35mm lens? That would be the X-100V and a lot of people like that limitation and that simplicity. But if you're someone who wants to use other focal lengths and you're choosing between the two cameras, definitely go with the X-E4. So that wraps up my thoughts on the X-E4 and how I have it set up for the kind of street photography that I do. There's nothing flashy or really anything special about this camera. It's a simple camera, a pure photography camera, and I think there's something about that that's worth appreciating. There's definitely some quirks with this camera and some things I wish could be better, but you know, that's like all cameras. There is no perfect camera that exists and might never exist. At some point in time, this camera is going to be replaced with another tool, another tool that works better for the things I need to do. And that's fine. You know, as much as we say that gear doesn't matter, um, it kind of does because you should always be using a camera that works for you and, you know, doesn't get in the way of what you want to do. And right now, this X-E4 does exactly what I need it to do.